Okay, hello everyone. Um, I don't think that we've had uh, any Android talks yet, so it's particularly timely and it's my pleasure to introduce to you Aaron Kumar, who will be uh, talking about today, Grab's migration journey from Gradle to Bazel via automation. Thanks a lot, Chris. Um, hi all, I'm really happy to be here. My name is Arun, I'm an Android engineer at um, Grab. Um, so today I'm here to talk about Grazel, which is a tool that we have developed, which helps to automate from Gradle to Bazel and was primarily built for uh, Android projects. Uh, so uh, a little bit about the uh, consumer app that we have. Um, so Grab's consumer app is uh, actually a super app. So we have different services like transport, um, food delivery, pay, etc. And we have different tech families working and uh, we reach uh, around millions of uh, users every day and primarily in the Southeast Asian markets. So we were growing uh, here. We have growing steadily and uh, we currently use Gradle build system. Our code base is around 2.5 million lines of code, primarily Kotlin based. And we have a steady stream of contributors around 150 and they land around a couple of hundred commits every day. And we have a very frequent release process and we release updates to Play Store uh, weekly and uh, weekly. And while we had consistent growth, we were also looking to take advantage of uh, Bazel. We were very interested in uh, Bazel's capabilities like remote execution, parallelization, better parallelization per module, um, remote caching, etc. So when we decided to migrate, we had a couple of uh, concerns. Like given the code base size, which currently has around 1,000 Gradle modules, uh, we wanted to reduce the overall migration effort. So we did an internal uh, um, estimation on the uh, internal estimation and. It, it amounted to be several months of effort. And at the same time, it was very difficult to land changes on the master because land changes on the main branch because uh, because of the high contribution rate. And we decided that the migration uh, should be an incremental one where we have well-defined stages and we are able to have feedback loops along the way. And at the same time, when we talk about migration, it is possible that you, you try to tend to bend your code base to uh, adapt to the build system. And this was naturally pushed back by engineers because they saw it and very validly so saw it as a, uh, saw it as a regression that needs to be uh, tested, uh, tested heavily on any code base changes. And we wanted this migration to be a non-blocking one. Considering that we have uh, very frequent releases, we wanted this migration to happen parallel to feature development. And it, it needs to be forward compatible. What do I mean by that? It's not only about migrating and let's say we have achieved 100% uh, Bazel build, uh, okay. But what do we do from there on? Like how do we maintain, uh, how do we uh, how do we achieve at a stage where we can make Bazel as the main, the main build system, et cetera. So it, it needs to be forward compatible as well after the migration. So to solve all these challenges, we built a tool called uh, Grazel which simply stands for uh, Gradle to Bazel, uh, taking the prefix and suffix from both of these words. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to talk about the architecture, the design decision, and finally the results. And we also have some an announcements to make uh, over the end of the presentation. So Grazel primarily is a Gradle plugin, and it also has a Bazel rules component, which was which is developed to support the migration. And at its core, it simply generates build.bazel and workspace file for Android projects. So what it does is that it looks at the Gradle uh, source information and, and generates build out, valid build.bazel and workspace file in an automated fashion. And we don't do any manual work. We don't wire up the dependencies. Everything from the Gradle information is automatically translated over here. And it adds something for in, uh, something called incremental migration support, which I'm really excited to talk about in detail, which I'll do so in the com upcoming slides. And while the migration is ongoing, ongoing, we can keep Gradle as the source of truth. That means that developers they don't need to uh, they don't need to worry about supporting two different build systems, and they can have have less cognitive load when they're developing features, and just simply work on the Gradle system and leave leave the Bazel maintenance to Gradle. So incremental migration, why? So apart from the code base size uh, argument that I merged uh, earlier, so we do have a couple of other challenges. Android Gradle plugin is the native build system and uh, we and, and Bazel is one we are looking to migrate. And both of them does not have one-on-one -on -one feature parity, meaning they might have exclusive features. So what if, if we use exclusive feature in our project? That does that means that we have to either migrate to migrate to a state where the code can be built with both Gradle and Bazel, or we have to look into developing plugins to support these things. Okay, does that mean that we have to uh, wait until the code base becomes uh, migratable until we start the migration? 
I don't think so. What if we can still migrate supported modules and then merge to the main branch uh, as part and include it in our uh, as uh, and see it as a feature development, right? But then again, it causes a couple of other problems. We are simply generating build out Bazel files and then merging to uh, merging to the main branch. Uh, then how do we validate them? So we implemented a feature called hybrid builds. So hybrid builds provides a feedback loop on CI where part of the build graph is built with uh, Bazel and the rest of the uh, rest of the build graph is built with Gradle. The advantage being we're able to catch build regression much earlier in the process and, no, and we don't need to wait for the entire migration to be completed before verifying whether the build logic is working well and whether all the files are getting compiled correctly and such. And the and as I made an made an argument before, it is forward compatible. And current architecture allows us to simply regenerate the files when the build graph changes. Let's see how we do that. So any any project that we take, a multi-module project, it is going to have a variety of different modules. It can have simple migratable, simple modules that are can be easily migrated, probably collection of utility classes. And then we have we can have very um, complex modules which use exclusive build, build system features and that that may need some work to be migrated, right? So to do this, Grazel looks at the uh, dependency graph and validates it from a migration criteria that we have developed. Initially, the migration criteria developed adapted to our uh, our uh, consumer app, but it can be extended by the community as well, uh, and it can and it can reach better graphs, better graph based on the project uh, criteria. So Grazel filters out all the non-migratable modules and filters a subgraph where it can, uh, which knows that it can 100% generate a valid rule that will succeed. So after doing this, what happens is that let's let's visualize it. So we have, this is a typical Gradle project which can which includes the Gradle build scripts, uh, feature modules, utility modules, and such. And in this case, app is the Android binary target, which is the final one uh, that gets built onto the device. Ob obviously, when for building the app module, we require all, all other modules to be built. So Grazer looks at this uh, module graph and filters out the which are migratable and non-migratable and uh, generates uh, build out Bazel files as shown here. And ov obviously, app and feature two does not get their build out Bazel generated because they might be using um, some exclusive feature or some some other features that we have not looked into yet. Now, once we have this uh, build out Bazel generations, build out Bazel generated. We do something called hybrid builds via a concept called dependency substitution. I'll take a short uh, short intro of Gradle. So Gradle has three different uh, three different phases of execution similar to Bazel. Configuration phase is where we are interested in. We have a complete JVM API and uh, we can configure the build however we want during the configuration phase. So naturally, Gradle hooks into the configuration phase, and what it actually does is that. During the configuration phase it, act phase, it actually builds all the Bazel targets that has already been migrated. Then we do a concept, we do something called dependency substitution. Uh, let's consider this very small dependency edge that I've shared here. So we have an app target that depends upon a project uh, project sources from feature module. Now, if the feature module has been already migrated and built, it would have produced an artifact called uh, feature one dot AAR. So what we actually do here is that whenever uh, Gradle is trying to resolve the app modules dependency. We we hook into that uh, resolution phase and re replace the project project dependency with the already built artifact. If we do this for the entire dependency graph, what happens? When the execution phase, we build actual Gradle modules that are not migrated, and then in the remaining phase, we, uh, we just use already migrated Bazel targets. Now, having said that, I want to talk touch, touch base on code generation. So on the right, you see here is a very simple Gradle uh, module, uh, Android library module, which has a couple of plugins. Instead of parsing this file manually, we wanted to, uh, which would be very error prone, we simply query the official Gradle APIs to receive every project permission that we need. For example, the plugin supply, the extensions, the which target SDK version it is compiling, the dependencies, and et cetera. Then we, we have written a custom uh, Kotlin-based Starlock uh, Starlock DSL, which allows us to naturally write Starlock code from JVM. So the, as you can see, this is very close to what Starlock code will look like, uh, declaring variables, uh, calling rules, and everything. The nice thing about this is that this is completely programma, programma, programmable from Kotlin. I can um, add custom logic here, and simply the output, the simple output would produce the final um, Starlock build rule. So how do we accomplish this? 
So we have a set of core APIs. The core APIs have an entry point called Statements Builder, so which has a couple of um, uh, basic core abstractions like functions, operators, assignments, etc. Now let's let's talk a bit about. Okay, I want to write a load function in Kotlin that would get translated into Starlock load function. I start by writing an extension function on Statements Builder. So extension functions are a Kotlin language feature which allows you to add members and functions to a property that you you don't own basically meaning i don't need to uh, use inheritance to add a couple of uh, methods to the statements builder i can simply add as an extension function why i stress on this fact is that the core ap uh, remains isolated from our rules so we have already developed rules uh, starlock based written in kotlin um, in Android rules, Maven, Kotlin, Grab common rules, etc. And we do intend to explore uh, non-Android targets uh, as well in some time. Uh, sometime. So having said that, let's look at the results and what we have achieved at Grab. So we, we achieved 100% migration on debug variant. What this means is that we don't manually maintain the build scripts. Uh, as part of the feature development, developers simply run migrate to Bazel on the root project, and it automatically syncs the Gradle and Bazel, Bazel build scripts automatically. And there is a validation on CI to prevent regressions as well. And it reduces the, reduced the overall migration effort considerably in order of several months. And uh, it made maintaining two build systems very easy. It, it is actually on a self, uh, self-sufficient basis on our CI, where the developers only need to remember to run migrate to Bazel, and Bazel comes in and takes care of uh, everything else. Now, where do we stand here? So we have achieved build, and we are looking to migrate test targets as well, and looking to um, really excited to explore a couple of Bazel-specific functionalities, uh, action queries, and all these things. And we ask for Bazel's best practice, we would we should be looking at generating granular build packages. What this means is that we want to have more number of targets so that we we can better parallelize the build, uh, reduce the number of targets getting built. So we are actually exploring an automated fashion, either via bytecode analysis or a Kotlin compiler plugin and such. And that, but that is for the future. Having said that, I'm really excited to take this opportunity to open source um, Grazel today. So uh, the team is really proud. Um, so Grazel is actually open source today at uh, grab slash uh, Grazel on GitHub. So please try it out. Uh, even if, if you're not able to migrate the project 100%, Grazel can help you to migrate a subset of module and provide you a path to migrate to rest of the uh, uh, rest of the build graph. Uh, please try us and let us know your feedback. Um, Thank you. I, I, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I mean, thank you very much for a very a tour of the force in in in, in Grazel. and it's really really good that this is going to, that this is open source now, and I'm hoping that you'll get some good feedback. So I guess I've, I have a few questions here. So um, what I found particularly interesting, kind of like at the, at the very start of your presentation, you were talking about that a greater remains the source of truth. So okay. Um, from the perspective of the developers, that must mean then that um, IDE integration kind of like re re basically you get that out of the box. Um, was that was that yep. something that you had cons was was kind of like part of the motivation for this? Yeah. So initially, uh, we realized that um, we had a couple of missing features in Bazel that we needed to support. For example, Android data binding and a couple of missing features. And at that point, it it, it looked like a safe bet to uh, keep Gradle as a source of truth, and the developer experience remains the same there. So for debug builds, we can simply um, run Bazel via command line, and we can we have still not looked into integrating IDE features yet with Bazel. And and this having Gradle as a source of Truth and Android Studio working with Gradle as it is provides us the buffer time to look into ID features uh, gradually. So. I see. Um, and I guess then also retaining the fact that you're using Gradle from kind of like the, from the get go as your source of truth also means that you're able to benchmark this with relation to kind of like how how your performance characteristics are as you migrate to Bazel. Um, yep. uh, can you shed any kind of light as to kind of like what 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 your performance benefits are? Yeah, so we we really like business rem, uh, remote caching uh, capabilities and better parallelization. So and the configuration, we have a large project that means that uh, the configuration time for Gradle is going to be uh, huge. Uh, and we did we did we, uh, Gradle 
uh, already has a feature called configuration cache, but we are still working towards integrating that. So on CA, we see close to around 50 50% uh, improvements on um, build time. So mainly because of better cache hit rate, and we did spend some time uh, investing uh, investing on making sure the execution environment is the same, and we are still working on local build optimization. That's where we are at uh, moments. We have the debug build working, and we are still um, exploring things like remote execution um, for local builds. But for on CA, we, we have a clear uh, data that Bizzle, um, Bizzle is able to provide benefits in um, the overall build time. OK. All right. Uh, well, again, thank you very much for, for the presentation. It was very enjoyable. Thank you. Thank, thank you.